Are you sure? There's no doubt about it. He's an agent for the IDSO. Get rid of him. exactly sure what I was doing in London, but I knew from the cablegram I'd received from Tony Wingate that it was urgent. We'd become close friends during the war when I'd been attached to British naval intelligence in the Mediterranean. Now Tony was the assistant chief of the IDSO, the International Diamond Security Organization. His cablegram had instructed me not to contact him at his office under any circumstances. Instead, it gave me an address where I was to meet him exactly one week later at two in the afternoon. The address was in Soho. The building was a bombed-out relic of the Battle of Britain. Dan. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> well, you're a sight for sore eyes. I can't say the same for your branch office. I'm sorry, Dan, but this is the safest place I could find where we could meet. You won't believe it, but I even picked a cloudy day so that my own shadow couldn't follow me. Sound like a man with trouble. My friend, I can get it for you wholesale. Where from? Sierra Leone. Do you know it? A British protectorate in the west coast of Africa, a big producer of industrial diamonds. Right. And there's a smuggling ring operating there that's taking them out almost as fast as we're mining them. How long has this been going on? Nine months. Nine months? You haven't nailed it yet? Oh, Tony, slipping. Wrong tensile, boy. Slipped and fallen right on my you-know-what. You can get some idea how bad it is when I tell you that I can't even risk talking in my own office. Well, why? Well, there's a leak somewhere. The last three agents I've sent to Sierra Leone have wound up dead, murdered. This gang spotted them as if they were wearing their credentials in their hat bands. So? So I, I can't send another of my own men down there, Dan. I need someone who's, who's not even remotely connected with the idea, so. So you thought of me? Yeah. Thanks a lot. As the saying goes, with friends like you, who needs enemies? <laughs> Dan, I need help, and I need it badly. And I won't blame you for a moment if you tell me to get myself another boy. Can you tell me something else about the job? Well, that won't take long. All we know about the gang is that instead of using its own members as couriers, it's using ordinary seamen, a different one each time. Is there any more? Oh, yeah. Her name is Jean Lamar. She isn't French. She was born in the States. But her parents took her to Paris when she was about 15. We don't know how she wound up in Sierra Leone, but we know that she works in a cafe there called the Star of Africa. And she's the one we suspect of recruiting the seamen who act as couriers. Anything else? Just one thing, but it's merely a rumor. That the man at the top is someone the gang refers to as Mr. Carl. Well, is that all? Just Mr. Carl? Yes, but he's the one who's supposed to take delivery of the diamonds after they leave Sierra Leone. Well, now you know as much about it as I do. What do you say, Dan? Well, knowing the job, what would you say? Well, knowing me, I'd probably say no. <laughs> and knowing you, I'd say you were lying. <laughs> Hang on to this for me, will you? What is it? My return ticket to Coronado. Thanks, Dan.
Two days later, I was on a train for Liverpool. Tony had arranged with Scotland Yard to supply me with all the necessary papers to sign on as a member of the crew of a ship sailing for Sierra Leone. A week later, she dropped her hook in the harbor at Freetown, the largest city of Sierra Leone. Hi, sailor. Come in, make yourself at home. Okay. Get lost. Well, I've never seen you before, sailor. Well, maybe that's because I've never been around here before. Yeah, that might have something to do with it. You say we sit down before we dinner, friend. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing about you. Well, I am, or uh, was, Detroit. That's a long time ago. What's your name, sailor? Adam. Dan Adam. Hi, Dan. I'm Jeannie Lamar. What's a guy do for excitement around here? He's dead! Oh. Come on, Sailor, we gotta get out of here before the police come! I'll take you to my place, it's right across the street, you'll be safe there. Come on. Sailor. Oh, thanks. Oh, come on, drink up. Listen, my coffee's so bad, it'll make you forget your troubles. I gotta get back to my ship. Why don't you save yourself a lot of trouble and go right to the police station? What do you mean? Well, by now, the police will have a description of you, and they'll be searching every ship in the harbor. Even Houdini couldn't bust out of this town. Not without help, that is. Where would I get any help? Well, I know a man here in Freetown who can arrange for you to get to Dakar. From there, you'd be home free. How much does this guy charge? Not a thing. Christmas came early this year, didn't it? Well, not exactly, Salem. He does a favor to get a favor. Like what? Oh, all you have to do is deliver a little package for him in Dakar. What kind of a package? Count me out. No smuggling. Suit yourself, sailor. But I wouldn't give you a dime for your chances against the police out there. Look, there ought to be another way. There ought to be a lot of things in this crummy world, sailor. But there isn't. Now, if you want to think it over, OK. But do it on your own time, huh?
All right, where do I find this friend of yours? I'll bring him to you. You wait here. Make yourself comfortable. decide about the man I'd seen in the doorway across the street. He'd been watching me, that was certain, and if he was a member of the smuggling ring, I'd pulled a real boner in following Gene. But there was a chance that he wasn't a member of the gang, that he'd been watching me only out of curiosity. Either way, I was already in too deep to do anything but get in a little deeper. There's a room right across the hall. Good night, sailor. You're not going to let him go on to Dakar. Why, Mr. Courier, if Adams is an Asian, he will play along until he thinks he has closed in on Mr. Carl. Yes, he will go to Dakar. Mr. Carl will take care of him there as well as we can here. <laughs> Good. I suggest that you check with Mr. Carl. He may not agree with you. All right, Riker. I will check it. But I'm sure he will agree. Now, if you have some time that is heavily on your hands, I have another job for you. Yes, what's that? Jean Lamar and Byam. Jean and Byam? IDSO is obviously suspecting them, and if they are arrested, they will talk. Now you know what to do. Riker, do take care of it as soon as Adams leaves for the car. Sit down. 
My name is Alex Corey. What has Jean told you? Just that you could get me out of Freetown. In return for delivering a package to Dakar. I assume uh, this is agreeable to you. Mm -hmm. And this is a ticket for passage to Dakar aboard the Gambia Prince, which sails in an hour. The police will give you no trouble. And uh, this is the package that you will deliver. When you get to Dakar, you will register at the Continental Hotel, and there you will wait until contacted. Who's going to contact me? When contacted, and when you will hand the, the belt over, you will be free to be on your way again. At least, <laughs> you will be away from Sierra Leone, and a warrant for your arrest for murder. Do put it on. And it must not be removed until delivery. Ah, yes, one more thing, Adams. This belt contains industrial diamonds which are worth uh, a great deal of money. May I suggest that you do not make the mistake of becoming greedy. Be assured that you will be watched continuously all the way to Dakar. Yes. Now, Jean, your coffee. After that bucket of bolts I shipped on, I can stand anything. I'll try your coffee. Help yourself. I've been thinking about you a lot. How'd you ever wind up in a place like this? It's lucky, I guess. Think you'll ever go back to the States? I doubt it. It's a long way to Detroit, and like some joker wrote in a book once, you can't go home again. You ever tried to go home, I mean? Well, I'd play him the way I'm dealt him, sailor. And I can't remember how long it's been since I picked up a decent card. The way I see it, people make their own luck. Both kinds. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you're quite a philosopher, and I'd love to go on chatting with you, but you better drink up and go. Yeah. so interesting. I guess I won't be seeing you again. No. Well, thanks for saving my neck. Sure. What's his name? Riker. You've got to get out of here. Where's your suitcase? Behind the screen. Why did you come back here? Because of what I found in the cafe. Well, what'd you find in the cafe? The body of the guy I was supposed to have killed last night. Who, oh, by him? He's really dead now. Staff in the back. Riker. I saw him go into the cafe. You know why he wanted to kill you? Because they know you're suspected by the IDSO of being a member of Mr. Carl's smuggling ring. What do you know about the IDSO? I'm working for it. Oh, that's great. Great. Lucky Jean. You saved my life so I can spend the rest of it in prison. Thanks for nothing. Maybe it's not as bad as you think. Oh, yeah, convince me. I want the boss of this operation as Mr. Carl. That means I have to go to Dakar aboard the Gambia Prince, just like Corey told me. So? 
So you're in the way. If I turn you over to the authorities here, Alex Curry will find out about it and warn Mr. Carl. Oh, I'll say he will. Curry's got more connections in Sierra Leone than the telephone company. Hey, you've got a problem, haven't you? So have you, with Curry out to kill you. Look, you can't stay here. Well, that's true. So what's the answer? You get the first plane to the car and meet me there. Well, why should I do that? Well, I could get you off with a pretty light sentence for cooperating. How? You know where I can find Mr. Carl. Oh, Mr. Carl will find you in the Continental Hotel. Maybe, and maybe not. That contact could turn out to be just another stooge for Mr. Carl. Oh, I want better odds. Are you gonna help? What if I say yes would mean no? You know the answer to that. The idea is so it'll catch you sooner or later. You can't run that far that fast. Well? Okay. Okay, you got a deal. Where do I find Mr. Carl? I'll show you in the car. Oh, where do I meet you? At the arcade in the Rue Fleuret. I'll be there one hour after the Gambia Prince docks. Now get on with your packing. The run up the African coast took a little over 48 hours. I spent most of it wondering whether I'd ever see Jean Lamar again, in Dakar anyway. For some reason, I had a hunch that I would. The hunch paid off. Aren't you surprised to see me? No. Where is it? You're here. And you wait. Anything I can do for you? Well, Mr. Carl. Now, that was pretty silly, Curry. You'd never make my weight. You knew it all along. I considered it a strong possibility. I couldn't blow the whistle on you in Sierra Leone in case I was wrong. Why the double identity, Curry? So you could take a double cut of the profits? Well, surprised? No, not very. Everybody seems to have been on to you, Corey. Put the phone down. Sit down, Alex. Take the belt off. You're not being very smart, Gene. Take it off. Remember what I told you in Freetown? You can't run far enough or fast enough not to get caught. With what's in that belt, I can sure give it a whirl. No, you can't. You think I'm stupid enough to walk in here with a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of diamonds? This thing's full of sand. You're lying. Those diamonds were sewed into that belt. You couldn't have made a switch. See for yourself. should have played it on the level. Are you kidding? Where would that have got me? Look, mister, I haven't trusted men since I was big enough to fight them off. And I wasn't about to start with you. I wish you had. Until you came in the door with this gun, Detroit wasn't nearly as far away as you imagined. Corey. Jesus. 